Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is sign. S-I-G-N. Really? You bet your life. than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Well, what do you know? That's me! Well, here I am again with $3,500 for one of our couples. Groucho, we have a young, engaged couple for you now. They volunteer to be on the show just... For me? Be... Oh, how nice. <laughs> well, not exactly. They volunteer only to be on the show just oh, before we went on the air. And I'd like you to meet them, folks. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, an engaged couple, eh? Well, that, that's... Welcome, youngsters, to the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. An engaged couple, eh? That's very romantic. And you're a very romantic-looking couple. Thank you. I guess that's because it's spring, and in the spring, a young man's thoughts lightly turns to mush. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally, the income tax. Miss, uh, uh, what's your name again? Sally Smoot. <laughs> Sally Smoot, did you say? Yes, I did. Well, Sally, you're a cute Smoot. Uh, <laughs> what, what's a Smoot? Well, it's an old German name, and it used to be Von Smoot, but they just cut off the Von and just left the Smoot. <laughs> How, is Vaughn still living? Well, I think so. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Sally? I'm 18. 18? Mm -hmm. You're real young to be 18, aren't you? <laughs> and you're going to get married, eh? Smart girl. You're going to get rid of the name Smoot. Is that the reason you're getting married? <laughs> no. What's the name of the man you're going to marry? Alden Oberjiggy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I beg your pardon, Sally. Uh, what, what did you say? Alden Oberjiggy. No, you just made that up. <laughs> Seriously, you mean you're going from Smoot to Oberjiggy? <laughs> How far is it from Smoot to Oberjiggy? <laughs> I made the trip once by shrimp boat. <laughs> I don't remember how long it took me, though. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Oberjig, that, uh, what kind of... Well, it's, uh, partly Polish. Polish? Polish. 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 Partly Polish. Polish. Are you from Poland? What part of Poland are you from, Alden? Uh, Jacksonville, Illinois. <laughs> well, that's, that's behind the Iron Curtain, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I thought Jacksonville was in Florida. <laughs> Well, I'll just keep call just call you Al, eh? That's fine. I could keep calling you Mr. Oberjerky, but then we wouldn't we wouldn't have time for the big question later on. <laughs> or anything else for that matter. Why don't you just shorten it to Jakey? <laughs> or have the Ober cut off by the same fellow that cut your name down. <laughs> Mr. Ober, when are you going to get married? Well, uh, sometime around the uh, 4th of July. What a curious way to observe Independence Day. <laughs> well, I guess the fireworks will start after the ceremony. Do you have a job, Sally? Yes, I do. I work for Van Camp's Hall and Dutch Bakery. Is you work in a bakery? Mm-hmm. Is that so? What do you, first thing you do in the morning, I suppose you call the rolls, huh? <laughs> no, I put on my cap and my apron. Oh. Is that all you do? You just put on your <laughs> And then you go home? Huh? <laughs> no. What sort of work do you do? Uh, do you wear a cap and gown, too? Well, I wear a cap, but I don't wear a gown. I run a service station. Well, run it over here. I'm out of gas. <laughs> well, I can't. Where do, you, where do you run this uh, service station? Well, I run a Chevron service station on the corner of 2nd and Santa Ana in Belmont Shore, Long Beach, California. That was a nice plug, Al. <laughs> Buttering up the boss a little, eh? Well... You suppose he'll give you a raise after <clears throat> that? No, I don't think so. I'm the boss. <laughs> Not after the 4th of July, you know. <laughs> 
Well, you. you're a lovely, nice, wholesome American couple, and I'm sure you're going to be very happy together, and you have Thank my you. best wishes. I hope there'll be many little overjerkings. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $3,500 <clears throat> question. Right now, there's something of importance to everybody that I want you to listen to. Put yourself in the driver's seat. Step down on that accelerator. Then feel that power. Surging power. Power you never dreamed a car could have. That's what you'll experience when you drive the new, the spectacular, the 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer invites you to stop in and try this great new car yourself from behind the wheel. Once you drive it, you'll want the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. DeSoto's mighty 160-horsepower V8 engine gives you power with smoothness never before achieved. Extra power in all speed ranges. But, of course, that's only one big reason why you should decide on DeSoto. DeSoto also brings you sensational power steering that lets you turn the wheel with one finger, even when the car is at a standstill. And, of course, power brakes, safety rim wheels, waterproof ignition, Oroflow shock absorbers, feature after feature that makes DeSoto your very best car value. Tomorrow, stop at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and see America's most talked about new car, the 160 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Drive it. <laughs> Right now, let's see how well you work together as a team. Uh, George? Yes, sir. All right, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $3,500 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Even I understand that. All right, let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs with a color in the title as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? All of it. All of it? All right, what is the name of this song? Play, Jerry. All right, what do you say, kids? Silver strands among the gold. Well, silver, silver threads amongst the gold, but that's close enough. <laughs> and you're on your way. You have $40. That's a pretty old song for a young couple, I think. <laughs> I never All heard right, it before. I never heard it before either. Remember, you're going for $3,500 tonight. Now, how much of this swag of the $40 are you going to risk this time? $40. $40, huh? All right, give me the title of this song. $80. The songs are getting younger and they're getting <laughs> faster. Here's your third question. How much of the 80? 80. 80. See if you can identify yeah. this tune. Okay, Mr. Fielding. Green Eyes. Green Eyes is right. You're now a five to $160. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 160? All of it. All of it. All of it, huh? They're real gamblers. <laughs> you know, if, if you win this, that's as much as you can earn on this show, including my salary. Here we go. <laughs> Play it, Jerry. The old gray man. The old gray man. Not much used to be. Put it there. Now, kiss me, <laughs> And you wind up with a grand total of three hundred and twenty dollars. Thanks and good luck, Minnesota. Thanks and good luck, Minnesota. It's hopeless. Thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth dealer. Groucho, we invited some horsewomen and some fishermen to the program what tonight. Are, what are they, centaurs? <laughs> and just before we went on the air, no, no, no. Um, our studio audience selected Mrs. Marjorie Kessler and Mr. Andrew Mardisick. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Well, well. <laughs> Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. The common word, something you see every day. Fish. Oh. Horse woman. Uh... <laughs> you don't have to look at me when you say fish. Either. I'm sure I inspired that. A horsewoman and a fisherman, eh? 
Uh, I presume you're the horsewoman, eh, uh, Miss... Uh, Miss Kessler? Mrs. Kessler. M oh, that sounds too bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're a very attractive filly. Where are you from? Philadelphia? No. You're not from Philly? No. Where are you from? Cornish, New Hampshire. How old are you, uh, Marjorie? Oh, that's not a fair question, is it? <laughs> well, give me a crooked answer. I don't know. <laughs> We don't object to a little chicanery here. <laughs> You're young enough to admit your age, but it isn't necessary. I'll find it out later anyhow. <laughs> I would say you're 19. Thank you, sir. Now I know she isn't. Huh? <laughs> Are you married, too, huh? Yes, sir. How long have you been married? Ten years. Ten years? Yes. You're 27. <laughs> what does your husband do? He's a builder. He's a builder? Mm -hmm. Of what, blocks or... Uh... <laughs> no. houses. Houses? Mm -hmm. How'd you meet him? Uh... Were you wearing a foundation at the time? <laughs> <laughs> How did you meet him, uh, Marjorie? I met him in a barn. Well, you couldn't pick a better place. Huh? <laughs> what was he doing there? Was he a horse at the time? No, but he had a very nice horse. He did, huh? Mm -hmm. What were you doing in the barn? Well, uh, admiring the horse. Did you go there every day just to admire that horse? Well, uh, it was well, an awfully nice horse. <laughs> and you finally married him, huh? Well, that's very... <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Modisish? Yes, sir. You just made that up, huh? No, what that's kind of my name is Modisish. Slavin Nevitich. You say you know a Slav who's got the itch? <laughs> the itch. I'm not interested in your friends. I want to know what name you use. My father's name. You're, oh, you're, that's your father's name, huh? You're, you're a fisherman? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What kind of a fisherman? Tuna. That's a piano, isn't it? <laughs> well, be careful with your hook. You're talking to one of the biggest suckers in California. Are you married? Yep. Yeah. Well, you're the sucker then, not me. <laughs> Some fisherman, he got caught himself. How did you meet your wife? On a dance. One, one time I went to the dance with my girlfriend and was tag dance. You and what? Some, was tag dance. Somebody got my girlfriend. And correct. what is a tag dance? When dance when you get another girl to dance. No. Oh, you didn't like the girl you brought to the dance, is that Well, it? I, I make mistake. There was my girlfriend, uh, and today my wife was same but size, and the same dress up, and I make mistake. <laughs> you know, I haven't understood anything that's been said to me tonight. <laughs> this has been a real baffling evening so far. Now, what do you fish for, uh, Andrew? Compliments, uh, mainly? For living. <laughs> and do you catch many of those? Well, it depends on luck. What kind of fish do you catch, Andy? Tuna. How, how big uh, is a tuna? Two pole. Two pole? Why do you measure a fish by a pole? When you don't measure a pole by a fish, do you? When one pole can handle, you put two poles on one hook. You put two poles on one hook, huh? How big, and how big are those fish? Pretty good size. He thinks he's under oath here, I think. Well, let's horse around a bit, you and I. For example, Marjorie, uh, what kind of a horsewoman are you? Do you work on a ranch or do you drive a milk wagon or just, uh, just what does it consist of? Uh? Do you ride bareback or do you wear an overcoat? Uh? I do most of my riding in horse shows. In horse shows, I see. Well, you're a society horsewoman, is that it? Uh? Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, you uh, can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do at the horse show? Well, I ride jumpers. Just jumpers, mm -hmm. huh? Do you wear them or do you ride them? Okay. <laughs> I ride them. Well, tell us about the jumping event. This ought to be quite interesting. Well, there are uh, different types of jumping classes. Mm -hmm. There are, oh, uh, well, like there's the five-foot class, the touch-and-out class, a uh, knock-down-and-out class. Mm -hmm. 
That sounds like society, all right. <laughs> That's society at Sarah's. What do you mean by the knockdown and out class? Well, uh, the horse that... Um, if a horse knocks down a fence, he is eliminated. I knocked down if... a fence the other day. You only want to give me $12 for a gold watch. <laughs> Well, I learned a lot tonight, thanks to you two. And if you want to learn something, just drop in and see your new DeSoto Fire No Me. It's a great car. Now you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $3,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The engaged couple won $320, and the secret word is sign. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected sports, parks, and stadiums. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $18. $18. All right. And what city is the Yankee Stadium? New York. New York is right. And you're on your way. You have $38. Remember, you're going for $3,500 tonight. How much of the $38 will you bet this time? $37. $37. And what city is the Orange Bowl? It's in Florida. Um, Miami. What city? Miami, Miami. is right. You now have $75. You've never taken uh, your horses there, have you? <laughs> no. yeah. All right, uh, here's your third question. How much of the $75 will you bet? Seven, seventy-four. Huh? Seventy-four. This is the last question, huh? No. No, no, more. you got one more after 70, this. Okay, well, Seventy-four. Seventy-four. In what city is Soldier Field? Um, in Chicago. Chicago is correct. <laughs> you have now climbed to $149. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much will you bet? Oh, All of it. Yeah. In what city is Franklin Field? Talk it over. Franklin Field. What city? Take a stab if you don't know. There are only 3,859 cities in the United States. I don't know. It isn't in Detroit, is it? No, it's Franklin Field. It's in Philadelphia. Oh, oh they went broke, oh, Roger. Sorry, you went broke. Lost all your Oh, well. Well, we, nobody leaves here broke. We're going to give you one more question. If you get this right, you'll split $25 between you. Now, think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. You ready? How many leaves in a four-leaf clover? Four. Four is right, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, and good luck to the Soto Plymouth dealers. We asked for some housewives and some husbands to volunteer tonight, Groucho. And here are the two that were chosen. Mrs. Lillian Sweet, Mr. Herman Zuckerman. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. A housewife and a husband, eh? Lillian Sweet and Herman Zuckerman. Well, now, let's see. Uh, Lillian, where are you from? I was born in Redlands, California. I'm a native. Oh, a native, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's most unusual, huh? And Herman, where do you hail from? Oh, I was born in New York City, where the Essex Street Park is. Where is? Where what is? Essex Street Park is. Essex Street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. We'd rather you wouldn't mention that name on this show if you don't want. Oh, can't help it. I'm <laughs> that Ferdinand de Soto discovered the Mississippi River <laughs> in addition to the fire no me. Uh, how long have you, you been you're married, Lillian? Yes, we've been married 19 years. Really? Yes. Well, you're an extremely young-looking woman to Thank be married you. that long. Your husband must have treated you most gently these years, huh? He has. <laughs> Lillian, it isn't necessary to shudder when I mention your husband. <laughs> how long have you been married, uh, Herman? First time, five years, and second time, 30 years. <laughs> How did you get the reprieve? <laughs> what happened the first time? The Something came, must have happened. The right? mother-in-law came to visit us. <laughs> Say no more, Herman. I understand perfectly. <laughs> How did you meet Exhibit B? I married my mother-in-law. <laughs> That's certainly an original way of getting rid of your mother-in-law. <laughs> now, would you mind explaining that, if, if there is an explanation? Precisely what happened, Herman. 
Oh, I met my mother-in-law in a department store, and she was a widow at the Just time. Just a moment. Do you make a practice of roaming through department stores, picking up elderly women? Eh? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Pretty honest about it. Now, Mrs. Sweet, how did you meet your husband? Well, he came out uh, uh, with my sister's boyfriend, and uh, he came out to meet me, and I had made a previous date, and I went on my date and left him there to play rummy with my parents that evening. I think he lost about 65 cents. <laughs> well, was he a rummy at the time, or was it just a... <laughs> that was just a game they were playing. <laughs> I see. Now, what did Mr. Sweet say when he proposed? Do you remember? Did he whisper sweet nothings to you? Well, no, he didn't propose. My brother-in-law did the proposing. This has been a tough night all evening. <laughs> That's natural. You married your brother-in-law. Hyman married his mother-in-law, and I was a male law bride. <laughs> Lillian, if you married your brother-in-law, what happened to Mr. Sweet? He's sour on the whole thing by this time, I guess. Huh? Well, no. My brother-in-law married my sister. <laughs> and your husband married Hyman's daughter-in-law, is that? <laughs> you better explain about that proposal, Mrs. Sweet. Well, we were invited by my brother-in-law and my sister to uh, their house to dinner, and I think it was just about the middle of the, the, the soup course that um, my brother-in-law said that there was a nice apartment for rent next door, and they thought we'd make a nice neighbor, so why didn't we get married and occupy the, the apartment next door? So we got married and moved in. <laughs> Did you ever finish the soup? <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and it's been interesting talking to you. That's what I like about this program. You meet nice, normal people every day. <laughs> Just like you and me. Now, uh, before I proceed with this, uh, I'd like the audience to know that you can uh, there's a popular library edition of Kyle Crichton's book, The Marx Brothers, that is now on sale at all drugstores for two bits. <laughs> it's true, and the book originally was $3. That'll give you an idea of the book. <laughs> No, uh, I may be prejudiced, but I think it's a wonderful book, and my advice to you is to rush down and buy a copy of this book. I'm sure you'd be crazy about it. All right, now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $3,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The engaged couple still lead with $320. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs about occupations as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the $20 will you try? How much should we go? 1999. 1999? 1999. All right. <laughs> what is the name of this song? Play, Jerry. Vulgar Boatman. Vulgar Boatman. The Vulgar Boatman. And you're off to a good start. You have $39.99. They really weren't very vulgar. They were, actually, they were nice fellas. Huh? 39 dollars Yeah. Remember, you're going for three thousand five hundred dollars. You're going to bet thirty nine ninety eight. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. Prisoner song. Prisoner song is right. You're climbing and have $79.97. You have $79.97. How much are you going to bet? $79.96. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. $79.97. All right, play it, Jerry. Come on, you guess, too. Peanut Bender. Peanut Bender, Peanut Bender is right. <laughs> All right. You now have you have $159. And 93 cents. Shoot the word. You had too much to say tonight, anyway. Shoot the yeah. All right. Okay. It's your last chance to be the other couples. You're going to bet what? All of it. All of it. Mm -hmm. Play it, Jerry. How much did they win? $319.86. You wind up with $319.86. And that means that the engaged couple with $320 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. We missed it by 14 cents. <laughs> well, I'm 14 sorry. cents. Right. It's well been a though. pleasure. Thank you. Uh, 
Easter time, when we all like to blossom forth in our new spring outfits, is a good time of year to think about our car, too. A good time to check up on its appearance for the summer driving ahead. Remember, when it comes to your car, good appearance is more than a matter of pride. It's also protection. So tomorrow, drive in to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and tell him you'd like to have his springtime appearance special. There's no better way to maintain your car's present high value. First of all, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will give your car a thorough washing and polishing, thus removing dust, dirt, salt, and grime. Your car will get a thorough cleaning job inside and out, including upholstery, carpeting, and luggage compartment, too. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will touch up any traffic scars that might mar the appearance of your car. He'll stop any rust wherever he finds it. He'll give your car a paint touch-up wherever it needs it. So drive in to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers for that springtime appearance special tomorrow. You'll be surprised how little it costs. Just look for the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here comes the winning couple, Groucho, the engaged couple, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. Well, if you get this, you can get married tonight. <laughs> All right, here we go for $3,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer, and please no help from the audience. When the government decided to build a hydrogen bomb, they chose a private corporation to do it for $1 a year. What corporation has been assigned to build this bomb? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Oh, I read it. Was it the War Department they decided? No, you, apparently you, uh, I asked you what corporation oh. has been assigned. No, I don't know. Well, the correct answer is DuPont. Oh. So that means the big question next week will be worth $4,000. Well, they lost the big money, but they won $400 in the quiz, George. Uh, 320 320 Well, really? congratulations and yes. give each other a big kiss. <laughs> Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $4,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See the DeSoto fire dough, mate, tomorrow... Here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. You're looking for trouble when you look away from the road. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.